Welcome to SAMO Highlights, where we take a look at interesting events happening at Santa Monica High School. I'm Jan Brueggemann. And I'm Ella Swimmer. For today's show, we'll take a look at Running With Speakers annual Halloween costume contest, the theater department's fall play, Clybourne Park, and the recent homecoming week, where we'll talk to ASB members Dean Chen and Alex Spanos. We'll also get to see the highlights from the band concert and talk to Francis Abastias and Julian Sonderegger. And as always, we'll have a performance, this time from Sierra Brewer on the keyboard. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more SAMO Highlights. One of the most exciting events at Samo High is Running With Speakers annual Halloween costume contest, where students get to show off their costumes and win candy. Tons of kids crowd around Barnum Hall at lunch to see everyone's costumes and support their friends. Since Halloween was actually on a Saturday this year, not as many people wore their costumes to school. The ones that did, however, were pretty great. Let's take a look at some of the entries and winners of this year's costume contest. Come on down, show off your costumes. Let's see who has the best one in the school. Nathan Garcia, who went as Kotal Khan from Mortal Kombat, put a lot of effort into his costume and definitely deserved to win. The other winners were Tiana as Sadness from Inside Out and the Teachers as Running with the Bulls. All three winners did a great job in their costumes. Yeah, but this is also the second time in three years that the teachers have won the costume contest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the judges <laughs> I don't know about that. are their teachers. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, the judges, either way, Running With Speakers did a great job putting the entire contest together for everyone to show off their costumes. And speaking of costumes, Sam High's Theater Department will also be in costumes on Friday for the opening night of Clybourne Park, this year's fall play. Clybourne Park is a spin-off of the play A Raisin in the Sun, and it takes place in two acts one set in the 50s and one in modern day. It's a satire that deals with the topic of racism while still remaining humorous and somewhat lighthearted. The actors in the play are extremely talented and have put a ton of hard work, so it seems like it's going to be great. We actually do have some footage from one of their many rehearsals, so let's take a look. My name is Brennan and my character is Russ. My character is a middle-aged man in the 1950s. Uh, he's mourning the loss of his uh, son who committed suicide two years previous to the uh, play. I believe Russ is declining your gracious honor. I really liked developing my character because he's so deep and some of the stuff he says is mean but also funny and I think all of the banter of the play has really kept it interesting. If you and Jim want to talk about Kenneth on your own time, if that gives you some sort of comfort. Oh, and are we not allowed any comfort anymore? Well, Kenneth didn't get a whole lot of comfort, did he? Hi, I'm Cashel O'Malley. I'm playing Steve. 
Uh, I'm Sebastian Shear. I'm playing Tom. I'm Dylan Duvall. I'm playing Dan. Tom is a lawyer who is fed up with everyone's stuff, including especially Steve's. So he's fed up. The history of America is the history of private property. Read the Tocqueville. My character Dan is a contractor working on this house, remodeling the back, and he is just totally oblivious to everything going on inside of the house, and he just cares about finding this thing under a tree. For arm twisting, you have to be for black men. You have to for yeah! My name is Nathan Shapiro, and I play Kenneth. So my character is a Korean war vet who comes back home and he's been accused of killing civilians, killing innocent people overseas. He's very isolated, he's very alienated, he's not a hero, he's sort of an outcast. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's that, a party? Uh, yes, sir. The play really focuses on uh, gentrification and uh, racial issues, a lot of uh, how a neighborhood can change from black to white and vice versa, and how people are subconsciously racist. Take it, you should take it and make use of it. Somebody should. You don't need it. it for you. Ma'am, we don't want your things. Please, we got our own things. This is an edgier show than we've done in years past, just in terms of subject matter. <laughs> character is sort of like a, it's like a light switch. When I'm not on stage, I'm very, you know, cavalier, very like jovial. When it comes time, I just sort of just, and I get, in, and I get into it and I get really low, I get really depressed. Karen, can I speak up? <laughs> how's how's Ben doing? Everyone has put a lot of work into the play, and I think it's really coming together with this uh, rehearsal, and we've got a few more before showtime, uh, but I'm sure it's going to be a really great show. Come to Clybourne Park. It's uh, November 6th, 7th, 13th, and 14th in the Humanity Center. It's really, really cool that the play is set in two different time periods. It's an interesting way to show how much society has changed since the 50s. Clybourne Park opens on November 6th and has shows on the 7th, 13th, and 14th at 7 p.m. in the Humanity Center. Tickets are $10 at the door, and this is a show that you won't want to miss. A lot of my friends are actually in the show, so I know I'll definitely be there. Hey, I'll see you there. <laughs> I'll see you there. We'll be back to talk about Homecoming right after a short break, so keep watching. How far does one dollar go today? Not far, huh? Think again. Los Angeles Regional Food Bank creates four healthy meals with one dollar. We mobilize resources to feed people in need. 1.7 million people face hunger in Los Angeles County. Help us reach our vision that no one goes hungry in Los Angeles County. It's a wireless world out there. So be sure to stay connected with Santa Monica. Follow us on Twitter for the latest announcements. Receive instant updates on activities citywide. Like us on Facebook and join in on the conversation. Stay connected with your city. And don't miss a tweet. Homecoming week is one of the biggest events at SAMO, and this year was just as exciting as the last. Leading up to the dance was the homecoming pep rally and football game, which brings everyone together and raise school spirit. And of course, homecoming king and queen are, and crown the night of homecoming. Everyone is really, really excited for it this year, especially since the seniors like us, it's our last one.
ASB is Sam Ohi's associated student body, which plans and organizes a lot of the great events like homecoming that happen at school. Here with us today are Dean Shen and Alex Spanos, who are president and vice president of ASB. I personally know them too as a member of ASB. How are you doing, Dean? What's up, Alex? Pretty good. <laughs> good. Uh, yeah, well, yep. Thank you guys so much for being here. So um, basically, the day before the homecoming dance was the pep rally, and I just kind of wanted to know, like, what was that like setting up with um, running with speakers? Like, how was that for you guys? Well, um, you know, it was uh, really great. Um, first of all, we have to, you know, give a lot of credit to Running With Speakers. They always do an impeccable job, uh, you know, working with us, um, you know, to set up these rallies. Um, you know, ASB's role generally is sort of, um, you know, we decorate the uh, stage and we sort of plan out the script. After that, it's all in Running With Speakers' hands. So, you know, we really trust them to do a lot. Um, you know, this uh, time around, we sort of split up our show into two sort of parts, right? Mm -hmm. First part, we had sort of a student-focused kind of um, uh, sort of show. So we had, um, you know, various uh, student performances and cheer and, you know, that, that kind awesome. of thing. And then, uh, <laughs> cool. you know, for the second part of the show, um, the uh, really popular, I'd say, um, you know, uh, teacher performance teachers, yeah, that section, I think a lot they of people really job. loved. And, uh, <laughs> You know. Yeah, um, I thought that this time uh, it was a lot more setting up as far as uh, running with speakers is part because again, as Dean said before, we had a lot more music performances so obviously we had a lot more setting up as far as getting um, a CD playlist um, all prepared but again it worked out to be pretty well, you know, transitions were great and overall again the teachers were just a great crowd pleaser. Yeah. I would well, agree. Ella and I were both there, but how would you say Homecoming won as a whole? Uh, I think Homecoming was great, you know. Um, you know, uh, it's always, you know, one of the bigger events of the year that, you know, ASP we put on. Um, you know, and uh, it was, uh, you know, three parts basically that sort of go into every Homecoming, right? Uh, first we had the rally, right? So, um, you know, that went pretty well. Uh, after that was the uh, Homecoming game, uh, you know, it's... Uh, or not, um, kind of a tough game, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we were you know uh, kind of a tough game, but, you know, really. the team always gives their best, so, you know, we're, mm -hmm. um, you know, glad always to cheer them on, and then, um, of course, the, uh, the next day, then, um, is the, uh, homecoming dance, and, uh, you know, all those things, ASB is involved in sort of planning and executing Right, them. wait, Dean actually uh, won homecoming king uh, at yeah. Samo, yeah. and yeah. how was that for you? Was that exciting? It, it was, uh, it was kind of interesting, uh, you know, I, I, it was, it was kind of exciting, yeah, you know, um, you know, I'm really just glad to be able to represent, represent the school, and, um, you know, it was, uh, really, uh, you did a great job. Really yeah. a great <laughs> honor, to, really yeah, a great honor awesome. to be, uh, you know, sort of elected by my fellow students, you know, it's, you know, really yeah. got handed to them. Very cool. You know, Ella actually asked me to homecoming, and I had to begrudgingly accept. But what would you, what would you say homecoming meant to you and the rest of ASB? Um, well, I mean, we all had a great time. As, um, after the biggest thing for ASB is obviously like getting people to come, really promoting it, and really getting our dance to be the biggest it can be. And once that happened, it was just overall just enjoying the dance. And we, I think we all, I can say, for, I can speak for everyone when I said it was. A blast, you know. It was one of the biggest dances we've ever had. We had a large turnout and oh, wow. it was a lot uh, of fun. I, um, actually, this was the first dance we've ever had in the brand new uh, Centennial Quad. Uh, mm -hmm. If you guys know that, so <coughs> obviously that's oh, the, right. Uh, it was in the innovation that's building. That's a big yeah. right. uh, quad, you know, next to our innovation building. So brand new. It's a perfect space for that, right. you know. Yeah. Honestly, um, you know, Super we had a. I think we had over 850 yeah. people there, so. You know, really yeah. great to have almost a third of the school there yeah. at the dance. That's that awesome. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming. We'd love thank to you. have you yeah. back in the yeah. show thank sometimes. You. Yeah. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Of course. Great to be yeah. here. Yeah. After a short break, we'll be talking to two of Samo High's band members about the band concert, and we'll have a performance from Sierra Brewer. So keep watching. We'll be right back. Last time on the show, we covered the orchestra's Disney concert. This time, we're talking about the band concert. The Samo High band consists of all these talented musicians who play wind instruments at Samo alongside the orchestras. We have some footage from the concert. Let's see how it went and hear from students who attended and got to hear all the great music they've been rehearsing. Hi, I'm 
Francis. Uh, I'm Marge Mellophone and I play flute and piccolo in concert band. And uh, I love band because it gives me a form of expression. It, it gives me a chance to perform in ways that I can't usually with other activities. and marching band. I love playing the clarinet because of its range, it's both low and high, and there's a lot of different music you can play on the clarinet. Many different solos, or you can play with other people in quartets, or with whatever you want. Hi, hey, I'm Sky, and I play the bass clarinet. I'm Maya, and I play the clarinet. And, well, we I love band because it's just Awesomeness. I like band because I like to play music. Here with us today to talk about the band concert are Francis Abastilias and Jillian Sondrager. Thanks for coming on the show. It's great to have you guys here. Hi, thanks nice for having us. Hi, you guys. Hi, Jillian. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you think the concert went overall? Would you say it was a success? Yeah, it went, it went pretty well. All bands did a really great job yeah. with all their pieces. You yeah. think so too. Yeah, this year we actually have a new band, and I think they did spectacular this year. Oh, a new band. What's the level of the band? It's kind of equal to the, um, which? To uh, the our second and fourth periods, which are the top two bands, and they're just a little bit under, but um, they're pretty on par with our second highest. That's but very cool. overall, you feel like the concert was like good, you got a lot of feedback, and everyone liked oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it was great. What makes awesome. this band different, this other band that's been, just been created? Um, it's basically just a bunch of the younger people, and mm -hmm. it's um, you know ones that aren't quite ready yet to you know progress with their musical career. But you know those that have the skills, you know that are you know they, they've uh, de developed the basic skills, but mm -hmm. they just need to. You know. So, with your experience in band, would you get, say either of you guys are pursuing a career in music after this? I think that <laughs> I'll definitely keep music in my life, but I'm not necessarily pursuing a career in it. Gotcha. Um, yeah, actually, um, I'm thinking of being um, a composition major or a music educator. It's very cool. Very yeah. cool. Um, what goes in, like, what do you guys, how do you prepare for a show? Like, what goes into, like, a live performance? Like, how do you get all those nerves down? Like, do you do anything special? I think that it comes naturally. It's harder for me to, um, if I think about it too much. Yeah. I have to just play like I would in class. It's just you're all in nicer clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in class, that really gives you a lot of time to like prepare and to rehearse and to, to put yourself you know, in that stage. You know, you're, you, our band director gives us this kind of um, phrase and it says, he says a lot, you know, practice how you perform. And that's kind of you know, what I keep in my mind in class and that's how I, that's how I perform. Nice. So what kind of music are you guys listening to right now? What's, what's on the iPod? I actually don't listen to much classical music, which mm -hmm. many people would think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's weird. And you play clarinet, right? And I you play, play clarinet. Flute. Flute. Okay. What's your favorite genre, then? What do you listen to? I, favorite uh, artists. Give me some. I mean, my favorite artist of all time is Johnny Cash. But that's like yeah. an Not old classic. school, like, <laughs> kind yeah. of um, just forever in my heart. But, do you guys um, have any, like, things you would say to, like, incoming band students, maybe eighth graders, freshmen that want to join band? I tell them to keep practicing. You know, um, it's they shouldn't be deterred by you know which which band they get into because all bands are very very good at what they right. do. You say you get like, the same experience in every yeah, single one. Yeah, because it's it's no matter which band you're in, you you're gonna get a good experience. You're going to learn something. Well, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for yeah. coming and well, talking. Thanks again. Thank you guys, guys so much for being here. Nice Thank you guys. You. Stick around. We'll be back shortly with a performance from Sierra Brewer. Yes, I'm home. Save you some dinner. Plan now for a major earthquake. Contact the Santa Monica Office of Emergency Management. Don't be caught in the dark. Santa Monica Museum of Art. 
take a closer look. Our performer this week is a member of the all-female chamber choir as well as the Mixed Madrigals Ensemble, which are Sam Ohai's advanced choral groups. She's also been in many of the school musicals and is almost always singing or performing. Today, she'll be singing and playing an original song for us called Naive Destruction on her keyboard. Here it is, Naive Destruction by Sierra Brewer. And I see Well, thanks for coming on the show, Sierra. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> so, uh, how did you first get into writing and playing instruments, and what made you want to continue for the next couple of years? Um, well, music has always been like a huge part of my life, and I've just like it's been a really good like creative outlet and just kind of like expressing my emotions, I guess. <laughs> and it's just something that I've always loved doing, so it's something that I definitely want to keep in my life. Nice. So, this song was called "Naive Destruction," right? Yeah. So, where did you get like the inspiration for that song, and like what's the title about? Um, so I'm gonna talk about the title first. So in it, I literally the lyrics go like disintegrating your naive heart. So I was like, all right, that's kind of a long line to put as the title. <laughs> right. So I just kind of shortened it and modified it. And then um, the song, if like you listen to it, it's very like typical like teenage heartbreak stuff. It was just like, oh, boys make me right. sad. Yeah. I'm gonna write a song. <laughs> so that was kind of the inspiration totally. for it. 
Got yeah, it. Boys suck. I agree. You know, honestly. <laughs> uh, so, would you say that music is a really good outlet for you for when things become stressful, like school or life or anything like that? Would you say you play music anymore? Um, oh, 100%. Like, always, if I, like, have a bunch of homework or just a bunch of stuff yeah. coming up, instead of, like, actually, like, doing the work, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just going to, like, go listen to music or I'm going to go play my piano and stuff. So it's definitely, like, a nice, like, stress reliever. <coughs> nice. Who are some of your all-time favorite artists? Well, um, my favorite band of all time since I was 12 years old is Panic at the Disco. <laughs> right. This is, like, not a secret. <laughs> and then um, I really have just... I've lately gotten into, like, a lot of different styles of music. Like, I really like Tame Impala and Unknown Mortal Orchestra. And then I also listen to, like, composers like Olaf or Tame Arnold. I Impala, by the way. <laughs> Amazing. Saw them. So do you take, like, inspiration from these artists? Like, do you think they have, like, an effect on your music at all? Um, I would say definitely because... The types of songs that I wrote like three years ago definitely seem more similar to music I was listening to back then. And then now, like, my songs have become a lot less structured and stuff, and that really reflects what I listen to. Which artist had the greatest influence, though? Ooh. Oh. Um, of, like, ever, of, like, at the moment? Ever. Let's go ever. Uh, probably, like, James Blunt. Interesting. Why is that? Um, just because his, like, music, his, he has a really pretty voice and stuff, and I really like his melodies and just how he, like, works everything together, so. Okay. Last thing, do you think you see music in your future, like, as a career, maybe? Um, as of now, not really. It's more just something that I, like, do for myself, but if, like, that happened, I'm not opposed to it. So we'll just kind of see what, where life takes me. Right. right. So where have you performed recently that's been, like, kind of a big, like, impact on you? Um... I don't know, like, I've done, like, a lot of open stages. And right, and, like, at Samo, do you do, like, the open mic night or do anything like yeah, that? Yeah, um, I, like, have, I've emceed them and stuff, oh, and just, cool. that was also, like, one of the first times I, like, performed, like, live, like, as a soloist was at, like, Samo's open stage. And then I've also, like, done, like, public domain. That was, right. like, the first time I performed an original. So it's been cool, just kind of, like, going around. Are you planning on being in the school musical? Um, I'm planning to audition, so we'll see. Good. All right. Well, good luck. Do you have any like performances coming up really soon that you want to tell us about? Um, there's like a choir festival right. next week, so you'll see you on there too. Yeah, see you there. Well, thank you for coming on the show today. It was really great hearing you play, and we'd love to get you back sometime. Thanks. That's all for this week's show. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jan Brueggemann. And I'm Ella Swimmer. We'll see you all back here next week for the last episode of this season of Samo Highlights.